Okay, hey everybody, welcome. My name is Kathy McPherson, and I'm very glad to welcome you to our webinar today, um, P21 in your online course. Today we're going to discuss the Partnership for 21st Century Learning Frameworks Relevance to Higher Education Learning, and we will identify areas of interest for future investigation uh, related to P21 and higher ed learning. So let me start with uh, welcome. Would you, can we go around and please share your name and uh, where you are? And if you're familiar at all with the Partnership for 21st Century Learning Framework? Um, I'm Vonda Lieberman. I'm an assistant professor in the School of Architecture. So I'm in Fort Lauderdale. And I don't know much about the Partnership for 21st Century Learning. Great, thank you so much. Uh, it's just Ellie, Ellie Harper. Hi, Ellie. I'm um, in Tallahassee, Florida, and I do not know very much about 21st Century Partnership. Okay, great. Uh, no? I'm calling from my work office. Hi, I'm sorry, I didn't get your name. It's Pete Ziga. That's where the ZS comes from. Okay, hello. Hello, and I'm uh, with St. Lucie <laughs> Schools. I'm adjuncting uh, with their elite program for their school leadership development with FAU. And um, I'm not sure if I know about 21st Century Partnership because we have a couple things here called 21st Century and I've had a couple other people with 21st Century on their website. So we'll see if it is connected. Right, okay, great, thanks. Hi everybody. Hi. Um, hi Kat. My name is Mary Rotondo and I'm one of the instructional designers and facilitators for the e-certification workshop. Welcome, and I'm very excited excited to hear what Kathy has to say about this wonderful topic. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And Judy Summers in the Boca office, and uh, we have had a, a basic introduction to it in, within our um, group. Okay, great, thanks. Um, well, and I'm glad we got a chance to practice the, how to speak to each other, too, because this um, session, we really, it's the goal, goal to uh, really speak to each other and share. Um, so to start off, uh, I would ask what you remember about the year 2002, maybe what was happening in the news or happening in the education world or technology. Maybe people were still amazed that Y2K didn't come to pass. I remember that. Mm -hmm. Earlier, but. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Facebook was just kind of getting started. Right, it sure was. It sure was. In 2002, the euro became the official currency of 12 of the European Union's members. George Bush created the Department of Homeland Security because, of course, 2001 had happened just before that. And uh, this Nokia was the most popular cell phone. It was the newest, newest technology. Um, and Kelly Clarkson won the fir very first American Idol contest. But I couldn't, I didn't put her up because that would violate copyright. We're really practicing not to do that. <laughs> so um, it seems like it shouldn't be that long ago, but 2002 was, was quite a bit a while ago when it comes to technology. Um, back at that time, the United States was concerned about the future of our young people and their readiness for um, college and work and life in the technological, the age of technology. So um, several organizations got together, including um, private and public organizations, and um, they came together to forge this common vision for education that would prepare young people for college work and life. Um, and if you see, it just was funny to me that AOL was the big, if you remember, AOL was the, was the big uh, internet server at that time. Um, and it's hard to find folks who still have an AOL account anymore. Um, the, what they did, they created something called the Framework for 21st Century Learning. It was developed with input from teachers and education experts and business leaders 
uh, to define and illustrate the skills and knowledge that students would need to succeed in um, work, life, and citizenship. If it sounds like I'm reading it, it's because I am, because I want to make sure I get this right. Um, it also, so up here on the rainbow part, we have the uh, student outcomes that are needed. And if you see, um, we used to have the three R's, reading, writing, and arithmetic. Um, and the key subjects are still an important part of that, science, math, history, art, of course. Um, but there's also, we have something called the four C's, which are critical thinking, communication, collaboration, and creativity. And then there's this information, media, and technology skills piece that's involved. And then you've also got this life and career skills piece. And they really all tie together. And the idea is for that um, it's not enough at this day and age to have just the knowledge in a particular field. All of these things are interconnected. And especially as we become more of a global community. Um, and then they also built in this idea of the support systems for professional development, um, the, the sort of the recommended learning environments that need to happen in order for students to build these skills, um, building the curriculum and the instruction practices, as well as uh, standards and what kind of assessments work best for this. Um, so we've got two really great resources that I want to share. One of the reasons that um, I'm asking for everybody to have a computer, whether they're with us in person or online today, is um, so that you can actually do this interaction. So uh, you should have your Google Slides page. Uh, when you get there, yep, I'm seeing we're adding names and locations and starting to, to make those our own. Um, and the sources are located, everybody's got access to those pages on the Google Slide as well. The first one I want to take a look at comes from the Public Schools of North Carolina. Great little website. It's got this really cool um, visual. Turn you off. Okay. And um, it's made with a tool called ThingLink, which is kind of neat. But what I like about this is that there's so many pieces involved in this whole visual here. So if you take the um, learning and innovation skills and come down here to the yellow and just hover over any one of these, you get a breakdown of what that particular skill entails. So with critical thinking and problem solving, there's the ability to reason effectively and what that means using systems thinking and then more definition of that. So it really there's, you know, what does critical thinking and collaboration mean? So it's pretty neat. There's the same for the purple part, which is um, information, media, and technology skills. Uh, life and career skills is they're talking about productivity and accountability, leadership, responsibility, and of course, you can read the rest. One of the things that we might find more interesting at the higher ed level would be these themes. And into these themes, we've got environmental literacy, um, global awareness, financial literacy, oops, financial literacy, um, health literacy, and civic literacy. Um, and these are all defined. And I'm not going to walk through every single one. The reason we gave you the links is so you can see it. Then there's the Partnership for 21st Century Learning website, which is just a gold mine of resources on here. Um, I'll just walk you through really quickly the navigation bar here. We've got um, the history of it, who's involved, how to get involved, here's their work. Um, these resources are great, you know, for educators. That's a fantastic piece right there. Um, if you want to talk again about citizenship, interested in that, there's a whole separate link there. Global education. Um, and the reason that I'm not opening each of these, I'm just kind of walking you through, is because 
we are going to take some time where you can go ahead and click through and search this for yourself. I'll set the timer for about five minutes, maybe a little bit more if you need it. But, um, you know, just really wanting to give you a chance to look through. And we're here if uh, during the time there's something you want to say or, or ask or anything like that. Um, do we have any questions at this point of what we're actually doing or what we're, what the goal is at this point? Yeah, so Kath, you yeah. want us to check those two resources, right? Yes, if you pull up the, the Google Slides. Yes. Yep, um, you can go ahead and take okay. one of the blank ones. Okay. And put where you are, and then there's the, the link here to each of those. If you find something that's particularly interesting, please share it, copy it to your slide. And the, the guiding questions are, you know, what do you find on here that excites you? How does this seem to apply to your students in your course? And uh, what questions do you want to ask? Peter, right. Yep, he's saying he recognizes this site that, um, Jim Belanca is a senior fellow for them and sits on the board of the International Society for Self-Directed Learning with FAU's Emeritus Lucy. Ah, gee, I'm going to get her name wrong. Um, so yeah, this is basically what we're talking about is that all of the key subjects are interconnected and they're, the themes are interwoven. Um, and skill sets are, they're all interwoven. And what excites me about this is that with online learning, we're deeply enmeshed in this already. You know, we're already um, having people, having students do, if you're in an online course, you're already working in, in uh, technology literacy. Um, there's a global aspect to it, there's community. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and if nobody has a question or, or an issue at this point, go ahead and um, just start my own little timer and let everybody go ahead and just start, take your time to look through. And uh, like I said, if you do have a question or anything, go ahead and unmute yourself or, or chat and we'll get started. Okay, we're back. I know it's not a long time, but now, you know, since you've got the links, it won't be hard to go back to them. This really is just an, uh, kind of a survey, if you will. Um, Ellie, can, would you like to share with us at all? Hello? Hi. Oh, okay. Yes. Um, so I think the thing that excites me is one, well, when I saw the professional development link on the, um, on the one website, because I'm always interested in professional development. Um, and also when I was looking at the, um, the, the, is it the think thing, the think link, um, mm, the thing yeah. link, the mm -hmm. tool. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great, and hovering over those uh, concepts just to, to learn a little more about it, I found that was um, the most interesting because, um, like I said, I didn't really uh, know too much, know anything about it really at all uh, prior to this um, webinar. And so just um, learning more about it was pretty exciting. And because I am in the area of um, reading and English literature writing, um, I did find the, um, what was it, the, the three, I'm sorry. The, the four C's. C's. Yeah, the four C's, and mm -hmm. particularly the, the topics in the, um, in the green, I can see how they would fit nicely into, like, thematic um, course reading and writing assignments, so. Mm, thank you. Um, if you, any of you um, are interested in the, I, there's a wonderful video if you um, hover over it. I was really tempted to show it, 
by um, Peter and Paul Reynolds uh, about the four C's. It's wonderful, but it's not perfect for this session, but definitely go back and check it out at some point. Thanks, Ellie. That's great. Um, Wanda, we'd love to hear from you. Um, well, I think I actually, I, maybe I misunderstood. I ended up writing it all on my little uh, uh, card there. But um, I'm really interested in the idea of uh, yeah, citizenship literacy, you know, mm. um, civic literacy. I feel like like somehow that is a piece that's often missing um, in some places and kind of I'm trying to figure out always how to frame that like pretty much every topic has a political angle or a way in which it can make students understand their place in a much larger set of structures and I think that it's also part of recognizing that knowledge or what they're trying to learn is not some abstract formal content but is actually really connected in and is embedded throughout their own experiences and the question for me always is how to extract that how to frame that and make them be able to access that and therefore also personalize or more maybe make what is personal a, a kind of analytical tool mm -hmm. thank you yeah and um part of our goal of this particular session was to see what are what is the community of practice what are you all interested in diving deeper. So I'm taking notes as we're going along here to say, okay, let's do another one later about civic literacy in your online course. Let's do one later about the four C's um, because these are huge topics and they're so interesting. So they're definitely worth coming back to. Um, thank you so, so much. That's awesome. Okay, we got it here. Um, Pete. Let's explore the, uh, basically going down a path I started before with them, trying to make the connections. This International Society for Self-Directed Learning had partnered with uh, Jim Malanka and had two principals from the exemplar schools come and talk about how to use project-based learning for their students. These are mostly K to 12 schools, but it certainly would be something that would be of interest to, I think, all educators. So I found the, uh, the Catherine Smith Elementary School and the Manor New Tech High School, which were two schools we saw uh, reports on. Great, a great system, and, and this really, is, I've been on this website before, it's just a ton of information on there. You can get lost in it. Exactly. And yeah, it's it it is worth saying that this is primarily focused on K twelve learning, but we're finding in all of our, well, in a lot of our research that these these practices, it's not just for K twelve. It really is for us too because pedagogy, good learning strat, good teaching strategies go across the board. Um, Thank you so much, and that's it's great to hear that that you're involved in that. I really appreciate it. Okay, and all right, Alan. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I just you know wrote that one of the areas I'm interested in is critical thinking. I sort of use it uh, in my ethics class. You know, I, I'm just not sure to what extent we're seeing the results of. Uh, any of these approaches in our students that we're working with. So I, I haven't noticed, you know, improvements in collaboration or civic understanding or uh, critical thinking over the years. So I'm not sure, um, you know, how many students are getting it and is it staying with them? Do we know that it's uh, really working in our own uh, state? Hmm. Interesting. So they've been working on this since for over a decade and we should have seen some growth by now. Is that? Yeah, sort of I, I, I've been here at FAU since uh, 2000. So you you think that I you would notice some things, but I you know don't really notice it. I have a daughter who's in high school, so I know how some of these things are being presented uh, in her uh, education. But you know, again, you know, it'd be nice if in university we could build on this. And I'm just not necessarily seeing it. I, 
obviously there's schools that are doing it better than other schools. Um, Ellie shared a comment that um, she enjoyed looking through the exemplar schools too. And you know, it's, um, Judy, you might have more, more insight to this than I do, but one of the things that, that seems to be at issue is this um, digital divide and the um, accessibility of resources for different neighborhoods and um, group de uh, demographics. Um, Judy, do you have a, any yeah. impact? Input? That's definitely an issue <clears throat> within the uh, uh, K-12 environment is the access of, of the students and the huge variance from school to school and, and area to area. It, it, it is, it's a, a major piece of it. Hmm. Okay, thank you. Do we have anybody else? Okay, Mary. Okay, so um, can you hear me? Yes. All right, so I wrote on my slide that uh, I really loved the implementation guide for assessments and particularly how it targets the skills that we want to develop, those four C skills. Because um, like what Vanda was saying, they're not abstract anymore if we follow those recommendations there. So it's kind of a, a, an interesting tool to look at. I actually downloaded it and definitely will uh, go more into it. Uh, so content also that relates to not only civic literacy, but cultural awareness. I think that's a major piece of it. Uh, very interesting. So all of that, I think, will guide and inform a much better, uh, much, I would say, comprehensive view of the skills we want to develop. Mm. So definitely more, more, more to read <laughs> and more, more to learn. There absolutely is. Yeah. There absolutely is. Okay. Well, we are ahead of schedule. So let's see. Maybe we could open up the um, what the global education piece because of um, speaking about civic. And here's our four C's. Um, you know, maybe we sh maybe it would be cool to share this little video about the four C's. Let me go ahead and open that up. I don't know if it's okay to record it. Probably not. We'll have to um, edit it out of our video, but it's still just a really great little video. So um, this was done with um, the Partnership for 21st Century Learning in Fable Vision. What I've heard is that we, in this session, that we still do have a little ways to go in terms of um, critical thinking, um, collaboration, that sort of thing, um, creativity and communication. You know, for all our tools, we still do just really have a long way to go. Um, but as I was reading, the research that I found was saying, you know, a lot of this really depends on professional development, the support systems that are down here. You know, if, I, if I'm an educator who wants to increase the, you know, as we've said, how do I actually go about doing this? And so those support pieces really need to be there. And I think as leaders in education and in our community of practice, that's exactly what we're doing. That's what these little webinars are for, is to help share ideas and open up questions. Um, so I just would really like to encourage everybody that we're on the right track. You know, I think we really are, um, heading in the right direction and there's a lot to take in the the research that that i read just really talked about that um the 
most important piece of one of the most important pieces of being a 21st century educator is this life, this commitment to lifelong learning. And just by being here, um, y'all are showing that that's exactly what you're interested in. Um, do we have any sort of last comments or things that folks want to say? Oh, Pete. Um, Pete says that um, this the video is a good example of problem-based learning, setting the end goal and having the students figure out how to get them there through collaboration. I, I agree. And I like too that they did not put down the students who followed the directions. You know, that's, you told me to do it this way. <laughs> that's what I'm gonna do. Um, and they also didn't put down the kids who did, had trouble following the directions, that some of them even just fell apart. So um, we just really want to thank everybody for participating. Um, did you all have anything else that you wanted to, to throw in or share before we close up? Put the sign in the URL. Great. Yes, thank you. Um, Marcel, can you put the, the sign in into the chat, please? Thanks. Um, so thanks for joining us. Uh, we had this very brief overview of this really big topic today. And um, we're going to continue to, to um, look into this as, as one of our resources. And we found some really good topics to look at in the future, the four Cs, uh, civic literacy, um, critical thinking. So fantastic. And I really want to thank you for your time. Your time is the most valuable thing that you have. And we really appreciate you coming in each week and joining us here. We hope that you'll continue to do that. Um, it's, it's just a, such an important piece for our, our own continued learning. Um, next week, we'll have uh, open educational resources. Uh, this is a great sort of evolving new um, tool of, of inexpensive, um, giant resources, amounts of resources to, uh, to use in your online course. And the day before the semester ends, we're going to have a Canvas Grade Center webinar where bring your questions, um, bring your issues, we'll, we'll help you make sure you're ready to go with closing out your course. And we also want to share that uh, there's a call for proposals that we're particularly interested in. Um, the Florida Distance Learning Association um, 2017 annual conference is asking for proposals for their September uh, conference. And there's a, there's a link for that there. If you need any more information, we'll be happy to, happy to help with that. These are um, the articles that, some of the articles that we look to in uh, pre preparing this, this webinar today. And I would like to make sure that we acknowledge uh, thanking the Partnership for 21st Century Learning. They did give us permission to use the images. Uh, we're not going to record and re-record the video. That's, that'll be cut out in our, in our final production. And uh, we thank you all for, for being with us today. And uh, have a wonderful week. Thank you. Thank you.